never changes. The end of the world occurred pretty much as we had predicted. Too many humans, not enough space or resources to go around. The details are trivial and pointless. The reasons, as always, purely human ones. The Earth was nearly wiped clean of life. A great cleansing, an atomic spark struck by human hands, quickly raged out of control. Spears of nuclear fire rained from the skies. Continents were swallowed in flames and fell beneath the boiling oceans. Humanity was almost extinguished, their spirits becoming part of the background radiation that blanketed the Earth. A quiet darkness fell across the planet, lasting many years. Few survived the devastation. Some had been fortunate enough to reach safety, taking shelter in great underground vaults. When the great darkness passed, these vaults opened, and their inhabitants emerged to begin their lives again. One of the northern tribes claims they are descended from one such vault. They hold that their founder and ancestor, one known as the Vault Dweller, once saved the world from a great evil. According to their legend, this evil arose in the far south. It corrupted all it touched, twisting men inside, turning them into beasts. Only through the bravery of this Vault Dweller was the evil destroyed. But in so doing, he lost many of his friends and suffered greatly, sacrificing much of himself to save the world. When at last he returned to the home he had fought so hard to protect, he was cast out, exiled. In confronting that which they feared, he had become something else in their eyes and no longer their champion. Forsaken by his people, he strode into the wasteland. He traveled far to the north, until he came to the Great Canyons. There he founded a small village, Arroyo, where he lived out the rest of his years. And so, for a generation since its founding, Arroyo has lived in peace, its canyons sheltering it from the outside world. It is home. Your home. But the scars left by the war have not yet healed, and the Earth has not forgotten. I'm going to, first time I am uh, uploading a second time because the first one just just didn't go through and YouTube hit me with a copyright and five things tried to copyright stuff. And so we have to do it all over again. The one good thing about growing old is that they, they get your way. New leaders of the tribe, they refuse to call themselves elders till I passed on. Which should be soon, if I'm lucky. Well, they want me to record my knowledge for future generations. <laughs> what knowledge they need is to be found with sweat and blood, not some letters on a page. But the future is a great unknown, and they may have a point. To make them happy, I've written down what I feel will be important. The key word is what I feel will be important. They want me to write my memoirs. Fine, I'll do it. But as the song goes, I'll do it my way. And I'm old enough that I'll get my way. First about the war. The war, I know little about the war, but it doesn't really matter. A lot of people died when a lot of atomic bombs went off and nearly destroyed the world. If you don't know what an atomic bomb was, then imagine the worst thing possible. Atomic bombs were worse than that. Like all the original members of the tribe, I came from the vaults. Before the war, the government of the United States, which numbered in the thousands of villages and had many, many tribesmen per village, paid to have these huge holes dug in mountains and huts of metal and stone built underground. There are many vaults, some were close to cities, and some far away. These vaults were to be used as safe places, in case of atomic war. As you may have guessed, when the war came, your ancestors made it to a vault. Vault 13, to be specific. For several generations, your ancestors and mine lived within the vault. 
grew their own food, recycled their waste, read, worked, slept, had families, and even purified the necessary water within the community. I was born in the creche, and was raised by that community, and a robot. It was a good life, but all things come to an end. About three generations after the war, the water purification ship the vault relied on to create the fresh water broke down. All the spare parts were missing or busted, and without the water chip, the vault was doomed. Something had to be done. The overseer, who was the leader of our community, gathered the healthy of us between a certain age and made us draw straws. Guess what? He drew the short one. I mean, it wouldn't be much of a story if I didn't, would it? I left the vault the next day. My God, what is this? Finally gonna step outside the doors of the vault? Our engineers can't fix this water chip. Who am I gonna find? Help me. I'm gonna need help. My first few days were harrowing to say the least. I fought off some giant mutant rats that were more interested in eating me than they should have been. My only clue was the location of another vault. Number 15. I spent a couple of days stumbling through the desert before I came upon a small settlement. I stopped there for help and encountered the little tall town called Shady Sands. I helped them with a rat scorpion problem, and they helped me. Understand that survival requires that you work together, even with people you may not trust. I did earn the trust, however, of two prominent citizens of Shady Sands, Tandy and her father, Aradesh. I've learned, even though Sandy, Shady Sands fell to the mutants, I learned they did survive and started anew down in the southeast. With their knowledge and the help of a man called Ian, Ian. who would later become my friend. Ah, thank you. I'm incompetent, Ian, and you are not. It's... I continued on my way to Vault 15, the ruins of Vault 15 to be more specific, ravaged by the elements, scavengers, and time itself. Vault 15 was no help for my people. The control room that contained their water chip was buried under tons of fallen rock, and I had to move on. After a small problem with some raiders, it would continue for years to plague not only myself, but the tribe. I found myself in Junktown. Hmm, for some reason I believe you. You may take the girl, but not return unless you seek our wrath. Couples for a bit. Of course, we have our share of problems. It was here that I learned the most important rule of all. Doing a good thing sometimes means being, uh, being a very bad person. My memories of Junktown are tainted, and I feel no remorse for my actions in that place. It was there, though, that I came across a dog who adopted me. It was my faithful friend from there on. Oh, my God! Go, go with dog meat! I miss dog meat to this day. While Junktown was a city of traders and traitors, it did not have a water chip. I was not desperate yet, as there was still time for me to recover the chip and return to my home, but I needed to move on. Fortunately, they pointed me in the direction of The Hub, the largest city in the wasteland. The Hub was a larger city than both Junktown and Shady Sands could bind. You could drop the vault in there and you Go to the entrance. probably would not notice. But the people of The Hub had no life, and it was a desolate place just the same. It eased my mind, however, to hire some merchants to bring water to the vault. Looking back, it was probably a mistake to do so. Keep your vault but I was still innocent of the evils so. that lurk through the ruins of civilization. It's quite a ways, but the vault has plenty of goods to reimburse you for your upfront money, so how about 500 instead? 
Sounds fair enough. Technology from the vaults can fetch a pretty good price. A small clue led me to the city of the ghouls, the place they called the Acropolis. It was there that I encountered a large mutants armed with weapons of an unknown origin. Come on, Ian. How did I know she was going to die like that? They have killed all of the ghouls residing there. No one stood in their way. But I did find the water chip buried beneath that city. And it was with easier steps that I returned to Vault 13. Now why the overseer was obviously happy to see me return to the vault. Alive and with the necessary water chip. He was distraught at my description of the super mutants. It is here that I realized the mistake I had made with the water merchants. I had pointed them and others in the direction of our home. Without the protection of anonymity, the vault could have easily have been destroyed. The knowledge of the fate of Vault 15 did not help. The Overseer tasked me with a new mission, find and destroy the danger of the super mutants. Once again I left the vault, this time it was easier on my heart. But looking back now, I realize it was also the first time I have should, should have seen the true hearts of those other vault dwellers and the overseer. I returned to the hub looking for clues and I discovered a shady underworld amongst the hustle and bustle of that large city. They thought they could manipulate. So, you're looking for a job. How fortunate. I have one that needs doing. Fine job oh making it through God. the defenses, what? mate. I'm rather impressed. Toss me your name. You're a tosser. But I proved them wrong. And I used the crooks instead. I... They tried to stop me. But I learned much about survival since leaving the vault. It was in my best interest to leave town for a while. I journeyed to this brotherhood. Thinking they could have the knowledge I sought. They were in a bunker. Just like our vault. Do you teach me stuff? Stuff? I could teach you how to fight. If you had any ability. But the High Elder decreed no training of new recruits until the threat of invasion passes. Thinking they would have the knowledge I sought, I tried to join them. It required me to go on a quest before they would let me in. Think it would be a short and easy quest? I agreed and set off for the place they called The Glow. The horror of atomic war was never so obvious to me until then. The Brotherhood was obviously surprised to see me. And even more surprised to see I not only survived their quest but succeeded. They gave me the information I required and some of their technology and I set off in search of the Boneyard. On my way, I took a detour to stop by Adidam in order to see some old friends like Miles, a courageous man who was just trying to grow food, grow life within this desolate, deathly place. Unfortunately, the place was... They'd been slaughtered by the mutants. It was at this time that I lost my dear friend Dog Meat. He got between me and a super mutant. With an automatic weapon. The worst mistake I ever made was fighting when I didn't need to. But we didn't even have to come here. We didn't have to come here. Dog meat. No, dog meat. Dog meat. No. <laughs> I killed dog meat in a fight I didn't have to be in. There was one person still alive and before they died they told me the mutants were looking for pure strain humans and one in particular. The description of the mutant special target fit me perfectly. Humans preferably little radiation damage were to be captured and sent to the vats. There they were dipped in something called FEV. Transformed them into large grotesque mutants. I had to find these vats and put them out of action. Lest another take the master's place and continue to build the mutant army. 
But before we got there, my friend Ian, the man who helped me through trials and tribulations, a super mutant burned Ian to death with a flamethrower. Burning flesh never leaves your mind. The smell, the look. Holy shit! Of someone that you knew going down. Well, Taito, it's just you and me now, man. Ah. Three guys. And we only have Taicho left. Many of the Brotherhood did escape, however, before the mutant army came, but many paladins and scribes died. Evading the vats, I came across more mutants and robots. None could stand in my way. I had a mission. I had a goal. And I had a really large gun. But even more important, I had a disguise. I found a cloak of one of the cathedral priests. And it was there that I could trick the super mutants. Well, we, we struck one big, big blow against this, but... Well, I destroyed the vats that day, thinking of Ian, and with it the mutant army. The last I heard, they splintered and disappeared into the desert. Heading back to the boneyard, we stopped at Adido and found out that the blades also fell to the mutants. It was here Taicho and I dropped one super mutant after another, but one remained. And with the lucky shot, he tore Taicho apart. He killed my friend. My last friend in the wasteland. After that small excursion, I went back to the Boneyard. The Boneyard used to be the city of Los Angeles, and it might have been the largest in the world before the war. It stretched forever, the skeletons of buildings lying under the hot sun. Not even the wind entered this dead city. I found many enemies. Well, she's dead and a now. Few friends. But she told me to tell you Red Rider. I'm sorry. I I just, I just don't, don't know. know. Follow me to a place where we can talk. Oh. She is a spy. I killed when necessary and learned more about the nature of my true foes. Deep under the ground, I found an evil that was behind the mutants and their army. Then a dark and forbidding vault where the walls drip with human flesh and the screaming of dying echoed through the halls, I found many evil creatures and mutants. Hidden from casual searches, I made my way to the bottom of the vault. The deeper into the vault I went, the more gruesome the journey. More and more flesh was to be found, integrated into the very walls. The worst part of it was the flesh was still alive and even aware of my presence. After a while, I find myself in the presence of the most hideous sight yet. I still cannot bring myself to write of this discovery. So what shall it be? Do you join the unity, or do you die here? Join! Die! Join! Die! But let it be known that when I left, the beast was dead, and the master of the mutant army was no more. And he did it. He killed himself. Bye bye, muties. I was not treated to a hero's welcome when I returned to Vault 13. The overseer met me outside the massive vault door and told me point blank that why my services to the vault will always be remembered. He could no longer trust me or what I had become. I'm so proud of what you've accomplished, what you've endured. There's no way the people of the vault can ever thank you enough for what you've done. You've saved, saved all, our, all lives. our lives. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe, Maybe even saved, saved the human race. race. <sighs> yeah. yes. That makes the rest, the rest of this, this even harder. harder. Everyone, Everyone will want to talk to you. To Every you. youngster will look up to you and want to emulate you. you. And then and what? what? They'll want to leave. leave. 
What happens to the vault if we lose the best of a generation? What if we are the only safe place in the world? You just gave us back all these lives. I can't take the chance of losing them. I've made a lot of tough decisions since I took this position, but none of them harder than this one. You saved us, but you'll kill us. I'm sorry. You're a hero. And you have you to have leave. To leave. Ah, bastard. So, I left. The days or weeks that followed were hard on me. I'd met few true friends outside the vault. And they had died following me. Now, my family had kicked me out and said that I could never return. I screamed, I cried. Slowly I came to realize that the Overseer may have been correct. I had changed. Life outside the vault was different, and now I too was different. But I have never forgiven him for doing what he did to me. I wandered the desert, but never moved far from the mountains that shielded the vault from the rest of the world. Perhaps I wanted to return and force my way in, or plead for them to take me back. Fortunately, it did not come to that. I found a few wretched souls, a small group of vault dwellers, who upon hearing what happened to me had decided to leave the vault and join my side. They knew little of the outside world and would have died if it were not for my assistance. Together our little group moved north, away from the vault and away from that old life. Slowly I taught them what experience had taught me, and together we learned to thrive. Over time, my ragtag group turned into a tribe. I fell in love with one of them, a woman that was also in the mix to leave the vault to find this water chip. And we raised a family, like all of our tribe's people. We founded the village beyond the Great Cliff. It is a secure home thanks to our hard work. We would send scouts back towards the vault to help others who thought like ourselves, but that slowly came to an end. We no longer head in that direction. I have to wonder what became of Vault 13 and the other vaults, but I never had the time to go exploring again. I had to teach the others the skills they would need to survive and grow strong, hunting, farming, and other skills to feed us, engineering and science to build our homes, fighting to protect what was ours. My love and I led the village and the tribe. The tribe grew and grew strong with our help. But like I said before, all things come to an end. Our sons and daughters are now the leaders. I'm sure that the tribe will continue to grow strong under the leadership of our children. My love perished years ago, and not a day goes by that I do not think of Natalia's face. I see it every time I look at our children. This journal is a legacy to them, our legacy, to their children and to the rest of the tribe. That is my story, and I am sticking to it. Albert, the Vault Dweller. Howdy ho, what's crackalackin' everybody? It's the old Cranky Gamer, and I am back here with Fallout 2. Like I said, YouTube's policy, the copyright. I had five people claim my last video because of the Louis Armstrong song. So I had to redo everything. I had to kill the opening, which I thought was pretty decent opening. Pretty funny with the Vault Boys. So that's gone. But it also gave me a little uh, a little reprieve of how to do things. Uh, and what I'm doing here is, because I was doing the prologue again, I didn't like my voice on there with the voice changer either. Because I, I'm doing this again, what I decided to do is go for Chitsa. And what we're going to do with Chitsa here is we got the speech and bartering in the first aid. Uh, her strength is poor, but we have everything up here. So her endurance and strength are poor. Sorry, but uh, 
this biological differences in men and women, everybody. Um, and but her perception, she's very good perception, and that will give us some good perks, I believe. Her charisma is heroic. Her intelligence is great. So she's smart, and I raised her agility and her luck as well. And I kind of knocked down the strength and endurance. Yeah, she will not be able to carry a lot of things, but she is very charismatic. She has sex appeal, which uh, she's going to meet a lot of men on this journey, and she's gifted. So when it comes down to that, um, so she's not going to have a lot of skill here. She can heal herself. She's going to have some small guns perks later on down the road. Um, but right now, um, she's used her wild ways and her intelligence to get her way. And so she's going to do speech and barter and first aid. Uh, I think she had one hander on there with a pistol. If I did this instead of gift it, but I didn't want that. I gifted is just too good. Unfortunately, with these two fallouts, gifted is just the only perk. If you only take one trait, it should always be gifted. And I'm doing the sex appeal because she's got the right stuff with members of the opposite sex and um, they become quite jealous. Her armor class is nine, action points are nine, carry weight is only a hundred, melee damage is one. Uh, and so let's see if we can have, have this go off. Uh, we are going to have uh, uh, first female protagonist and I thought that was just good when I I went back and I looked at it I said you know this is this is just something that I, I've ne never really done in an RPG uh, I just never played a woman um, so we'll see how this actually goes come in chosen one a lady with her big old bomb things you must and a know. pistol <laughs> the village is dying the signs are everywhere withering crops Dying Brahmin. Sick children. There is hope, however. A slim hope. That few know of. The old discs speak of an item called the Garden of Eden Creation Kit. It is said it can bring life to the wasteland. This will be your quest, if you prove yourself worthy. For that proof, you must first journey to the Temple of Trials. If you survive, come back to me. We will talk more. Our life is in your hands, Chosen One. Prove yourself. Find the Gek. Be our salvation. So here we are, Shitsa. And let's see what they say here. Clint, a fellow tribesman. Good day to you, Shitsa. You have not completed the trial of the Elder, may not pass. There's some questions. Forgive me, but I have no answers to your questions. Take the trial set before you by the Elder and prove yourself worthy to lead our people. Very well. We do shift here. There's nothing here. We have the flaming stuff. I wonder how this came about. I don't think the vault will ever do this, but this is his granddaughter. And she's not great at sneaking, but we're going to have to raise that up. There's one inventory item. All right. All right, so we're going to thrust. We missed. Let's see if we can get back out of here. Wonderful. All right, so we have enough utility points. But this ant will follow us, but can't hit us. I think. All 
All right, so we did kill it for eight points. So when we do hit, we have a nice kick. That's that's good. Okay, I like that. And we're just gonna sneak. I don't know if this raises our sneak skill. I'm hoping it will. And we want to get over here near the light, because that way we'll be able to hit. Should see us. Here it comes. Yeah! My god, Chitsa! Well, so far. You know, I, <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything else. We're so we're good on this in this regard. So far. We are still sneaky. We do have high perception. Squirt things that way. We do have a pot over here. I think we can go toe to toe at least with the ants. Little powder. Ah, uh, scorpions are a little bit different. Yes, they most definitely are. But we can still use the kiting. So ants are one thing. These are another entirely. Now if we look at our inventory. A total weight, 15 out of 100. Okay, it's right down there in the bottom. Silly me. Silly me. Oh, come on. That's not cool. That was not cool at all. Snuck up right behind him. Now the scorpion's probably gonna kick the crap out of me, yep. Cured or passes from the system. Old rusty law. I definitely put the lock on the door. See a raised plate. All right, we're back here. Um, let me see. We got sharpened pole damage two to five. Three to eleven, two to five, range two, range two. And, uh, yeah, so I kited one of them, and, I mean, my, I've only got four health. I'm, I'm freaking dying out here. So, we have to get something done here. Oh, first aid. Let me see.
thing is, is uh, the melee, we're, we're better on arm than we are with melee weapons. Okay, the truth. Yeah, we, we're really sucking on this whole melee weapons. Do better kicking the damn things. So now we're going to go look at the chest. Uh, if we get the chosen one, we, we deserve this title. sneaky snakes because there are raised plates all over this place it looks like I got a lot of experience disarming them even though I have horrible trap skills we'll look at our character no 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 inventory We're almost half our capacity already this will be a challenge. People who love to hoard. Let's see, raise the plate, okay. Where? Where it is. Disarm the trap. It's amazing. Who built this stuff? Like underground sewers or what? Uh, we can't do anything there, so we'll go here. Oh, why, why do I have punch now? Damn it. I don't like that at all. Ah, I got it now. Okay, so if I put the weapon in the first slot, that means my second is going to be strong kick. And I got to tell you, I, I like her kicking. She's got a nice kick to her. What's in here? Classic explosive. Military brand of explosives. Interesting. What am I going to need that for? Still poisoned. Whoa, you got me. I, I snuck up on me there, Aunt. Come on. That one. All right, 
So now we got another ant. Come on, give me, give me like one kick where I just, I just kick the crap out of them. That's it. Come on, ant. I don't know why it's only 35 here. It seems like it's much lighter in here than anything. There we go. And what is in here? Ah, oh, perfect. Just what we need. Yep, antidote. Thank you. Now let's try... Alright, I've gone up a level. Wonderful. So, disarming all those traps and healing myself made me go up a level. Alright. Wonderful. So what we'll do here, we're going to do our speech. Yeah, we'll do 47 here. Melee weapons. So our speech will be, no, actually we'll go down about... Yeah, we'll do 45. We'll do a little bit nearly better than unarmed. Even though I do like how she is a kick-ass with that. Uh, small guns throwing. Yeah. Alright, so now we have all that going on. And we will see if we have any more raised plates. Oh, we do have... Let's see if, let's see if our new skills. Yes! Our new skills are great. Yeah, so we should be a little better at healing. Alright, so we have a door here. Old worn door, looks like it could be destroyed with a well-placed explosive. Oh, well, thanks you for telling me that. Can't open it. Impenetrable. Understood. Set timer. And we're good. Go over here. There it is, the boom. Wonderful. Set it off. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. All right, shift doesn't give me anything right now. I'm hoping we get another a couple more raised plates. Because although it's a little bit of a pain in the butt with the 15% trap rate that I have, this is weird. Why? Back myself into a corner here, aren't I? This should be so much lighter here. There we go. And that's what I likey likey. And what do we got in here? I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay. I don't think we can really trade these things, though. That's the problem. Let's 
shit. Oh good, missed. Follow me this way. I'm going this way, so I don't know what you're doing. I don't really care. But I gotta go this way, so you're gonna follow me. You're gonna die, you're gonna follow me this way. This is something I'm going to have to keep track of. There's just no if, ands, and buts about it. Thank you. Kung Fu, Kung Fu, Fui. Kung Fu, Fu, Kung Fu, Kung Fu. Oh, well, isn't that a bitch? I don't think there's anything else necessary. Around. All right. Cameron, a young fellow who cries when you see a young man with bulging muscles and a very confident air about him. Hmm. Greetings, Titsa. I have the honor of being your final challenge. Continue your quest. You must defeat me in unarmed combat. Shall we begin? I have some questions for you first. What would you like to know? Why do we have to fight? The path of the Chosen One is not an easy trail to walk, Jitsa. You will be faced with many challenges throughout your lifetime, and the most difficult of these will be dealing with your fellow man. There will come a time when diplomacy and tact will prove to be useless your hand must be raised instead. This challenge prepares you to face another human. Look him in the eyes and know that you may have to kill him. Well, I disagree with you. I think that a peaceful solution to any problem is possible. You may be correct, Jitsa, but not in our current situation. You must defeat me to succeed in your trial. Look, I don't know all of your strengths and weaknesses, and you don't know mine. Accidents do happen, so what if one of us inadvertently kills the other? Let's just end this now, rather than take that chance, okay? Hmm. To your point, I wouldn't want to be responsible for killing you when all I meant to do is test your mettle. Very well, you may pass, Chosen One. Thanks. I'll see you back in the village, Cameron. There! We have our key strength. There is nothing that we can't do in order to get past a confrontation. Yes, yes, that may be boring. It may not be the greatest thing in the world. You're facing everything. Um, I mean, that's uh, that's going to be Chitza wet. Chitza's wet. When she looks on her grandfathers or her great grandfathers, Walt's Walt Bridge, putting in 
な。And there she is in all her glory. We got the nice number 13 on it. Boy, it's, it's been a while since we put that on and had to face the challenges of the wasteland. And here we go. I love this. I love the music. Wasteland 2 has this most of this one. Anyways, that's our. That was the trial of Chista, our new character, since we had to upload this thing again. Thanks, YouTube. But we will see with her charisma, her bartering skill, her guile. Yes, she's not as strong as many um, as many of the people she's going to face, or um, or has the greatest endurance. So she can go down pretty easily if caught into a fight. But for most things, it will be her cunning. And her persuasion and her sex appeal that will get her through this challenge to save her village. Thank you for joining me. Get up my nuclear waste alone.